Hi and welcome to this week's video. We've got a fair bit done, not as much as I'd like to, never do, because I've been flying. Not particularly exciting flight, but you'll see the video or have seen the video on Saturday with my little quirky question about uh, one of the handling characteristics of the aircraft. Uh, but we've got both ailerons free, one aileron nearly to the point where I can put the leading edge skins on. Once we get that sorted out, we can move further forward. So, got lots of little bits sorted out, uh, as you will see. So, join me in the video. Come on then. Well, I just realised that uh, after all the excitement last week of uh, trying to get the aid on free, and for me, cameras going flat, all these bits that you don't actually see happening, I didn't show you what the completed uh, leading edge of the wingtip uh, looks like. So, there's the bottom skin in and the top skin, filleted exactly the same, top and bottom. And then, where the bottom skin wraps around, it's been uh, sanded back, we've now got a smoothish contour going around. I say smoothish, it's, uh, it's quite a, a steep radius really compared to the rest of the leading edge, but it complies with where we need it to be. You can sort of see it's, it looks uh, fairly nice like that. And the covering, well, going by the way the masking tape flowed back onto the rib, and that, won't produce a very hard step. Let's try to get a, an idea of what it's like. So that's done at both ends. Uh, the underside of the starboard wings done, the leading edge uh, scallops on top are done, top and bottom. So I'm just about ready to cut out the starboard aileron. Okay, let's see if we can take one of these uh, ailerons off. Uh, screwdriver that should be all I need. I've just got these two screws to do. I've got the control lock in here, which she just made up out of uh, two of the bits which I uh, bored out for the uh, the step lightning holes uh, with a. A quarter inch screw nut going through it. Um, I think I want this to be slightly above, or at least level with the uh, trailing edge there. I can take that, those screws out. We'll see how easy this is to, to remove. Now, uh, these will be hex heads and be, you know, be accessed through a uh, little service panel in the bottom skin. Uh, but these aren't actually even quite long enough as we know but we'll see how, how we go so we take out our two screws easy at the moment because we've got no covering over it but I've been reaching up through the hole here and uh, trying to manipulate that bit out there we go so there's our pivot I, I created this one with a, a space of bushing and that allows at the moment just under a millimetre of movement from one end to the other uh, of the aileron uh, so it could do with being very very slightly longer but that was just a, a quick rough out right now we've got this end disconnected we need to get it out from the other end so I think Probably best to uh, lift, make sure that's in as far as it can go. Lift that up and wiggle. It's going to be. Okay, there we go, that's not too bad. Uh, with these bearings, it's going to be a little bit tighter, but maybe than it would be with nylon because you, you are taking it slightly out of a line but there we go we've got to uh, cut out the geodetic here because it's not doing any good and it's in the way and just clean up the inside there a little bit just got a little bit of excess resin not too bad and i've got my little closing uh, panel to go over the top of this so this is going to be varnished inside i'll do that at the same time as i do the aileron i suppose 
and now that we've also got that off I can uh, bolt in the uh, temporarily bolt in the uh, rear strut bracket and the front strut bracket and we can start to uh, put in the plywood or make up the, the uh, templates and make up the plywood sections to go in there and at the front there that would be good I've got to say I've been pleasantly surprised uh, things have actually managed to make it to us uh, fairly rapidly from Stein Air I've put an order in for uh, a kit uh, for the Peter Static system uh, with a couple of extra connectors and uh, the reason I went for, for, for the kit uh, it's got most of the connectors I want works out cheaper actually to buy the complete kit with all the bits and pieces uh, than it is to try and get hold of the bits individually and try and work out what you need and uh, so I went down that route and I also ordered a couple of uh, extra bulkhead connectors these are the ones which I'm going to utilize for uh, coming out of the lower wing to connect up to the Peter static system and I like this type of connector I've used these uh, on uh, HGV lorries and uh, various other bits and pieces in the past uh, this sort of type of connector where you, you, you cut the end of the pipe with a pipe cutter nice and square and then uh, these just push in like that they make a, a nice seal connector won't pull apart very easily and then you can just push on the the ring each side and release and it will also do that onto soft aluminium tubing which is one we use for going up for the pito and static heads as such so I've got tube, it comes in different colours, that was another thing which uh, helped, I thought was a great idea. I can have one colour for Peter, one colour for static, and uh, as I route things around I won't get them mixed up. Uh, they've got three colours because they allow for angle attack gauges. So I thought it came at a very reasonable price as far as uh, getting things shipped from America to the UK uh, goes. and. Uh, we actually look at the price and trying to find these in the UK it just seems to be fairly hard to get you can get them but it's, it's not as easy as it was just to go straight to Stein Air so impressed with the speed of service and the quality of the bits and pieces and what I've got so that's the nearest I'm going to get to an unboxing so the other area I want to show uh, the interior of the end bay the uh, geodetic has been cut out from this this end rib uh, the inside has had uh, three coats, uh, one coat of 50% uh, uh, thinned uh, varnish and then two coats of 25% uh, thinned, so 75% uh, uh, strength. We've got these little cut, uh, bits which I made up earlier and that's going to go be bonded on like that to act as a closing area so I can put uh, my covering wrapped around it's got something to bond to because it needs to have more than just the half inch of the edge of the rib so that gives you enough to be able to wrap over and I've got I can then put a piece of covering across here and we've got our area for our uh, aileron pin to go through without any real issue so I'll bond this on same way as I did these ribs here so it'll be bonded on with the uh, slightly thickened uh, resin for the front edge there where it's got the uh, the chamfer going on to the triangular section so there's the uh, cover panel bonded into place so these have been uh, sanded down later on in temporarily so i can uh, set up the uh, bushings uh, to control that end float because it's uh, slightly excessive at the moment so i'll get those turned up and you'll see those shortly it won't take me too long to do that uh, but yeah so this is all nice and flush with the surface just closes up that nicely for the covering to go on and support the covering going around the edge to give it a uh, sufficient uh, area to grip so this is the other area i've been playing with uh, i've just been working through cardboard templates so to support the covering around this is the rear strut here and that's how I'm going to cut out a piece of plywood uh, these corners here won't be square they'll be round uh, just so we don't 
half sharp corners and the ply will run the direction of the ply will run in that in that sort of diagonal there and across that way it gives it the, uh, the strength and support on this side it's got a little bit more of a wacky shape uh, around the, the cutouts again those will be rounded corners it has to go around the uh, the staggered plates which you've got and those two marks there that's where the uh, holes will be bored for the Peter static uh, system to go up and then onto the strut hopefully just turned up on the lathe uh, fresh spacer bushings to go on these uh, aileron hinge pins the outboard ones uh, so that we've got a lateral movement of about half a millimeter clearance just over half a millimeter of clearance for both ailerons uh, that way it allows for a little bit of uh, change in expansion and things but without having that excessive amount of play that we had slightly before uh, nice simple piece of stainless steel just got that slight taper on the end there so where it meets up with the uh, bearing itself uh, reamed out to uh, quarter inch uh, clearance to go straight on and it just fits there nicely so just marking up using uh, the template onto the 32nd ply just put some little marks in here so I know how to cut the slot I'll just join those up with the rule so there's the cut out piece with the rounded uh, corners right so with it sitting in position you can sort of see there's a, a clearance all the way around and uh, so that uh, there can be no chafing against the aluminium if we had it chafe against the aluminium that produces stress rise and that is very much a structural component but that there will support the covering quite nicely so that we've got the uh, bond area for the covering to go on it doesn't have to be particularly stiff it's just going to give an area for it to actually bond across to uh, relatively lightweight and uh, finishes things off quite nicely so all i've got to do now to get this bit uh, fitted is well I'll take these back up i'm just going to route down here along the edge of the rib there slightly and across here a 30 second of an inch down so that that sits at the right height using my router with the the long boards but i'll do that all in one go and when i've got them all made up and checked leading edge it's been soaked and uh, put into the form allowed to dry and now i've used uh, some 3m's lining tape to uh, mask off where the ribs and the stringers go standard masking tape used at each end and then on the actual aileron itself I've just masked along the outside edges I haven't masked these areas here because they will be sanded uh, to get the stringers back into uh, contour I left them slightly very slightly proud so they need to be just sorted out there and uh, so in the process of sanding those to conform that'll get uh, get rid of the varnish on those bits and then down here on these ribs here they're yet to be centre profile so I can varnish the whole front side and uh, and we'll be able to bond it hopefully so there's the final uh, product for the uh, covering panel uh, for the rear and therefore the front done on both wings <coughs> okay so uh, two coats of varnish on thin 50 50 so far it's just starting to show a slight sign of a sheen old uh, aircraft builder uh, told me you shouldn't have it shiny you use gloss varnish but you shouldn't get a shine if you're getting a shine you've put too much on uh, you want it just to seal the wood so he always uh, anticipated being slightly satin which is what I've done with uh, everything else all the other builds I've done anyway but as this bit is in a deep box section I will be giving it at least one more coat um, of 25% thinned uh, because you never see inside here 
and we just want to make sure it's well and truly sealed. I've made sure I've got uh, the varnish into my little breather holes. I don't know if I mentioned those uh, previously, but I've got these little breather holes here that allow uh, air in the D section to be able to, to vent through out through the bearing and things like that. So uh, you shouldn't have it fully sealed solid. Uh, it doesn't take much pressure to start uh, over quite a large area to start causing uh, aggravation so that's something else that I learned years ago so that's been uh, all sorted out now that's it for this week next week uh, we'll hopefully get the leading edges bonded on well this leading edge at least bonded onto this aileron hopefully get the other one in the same position and we'll start looking at the control runs for the aileron itself so We'll see how far we get and see what we can do. I'm uh, away for work, so we'll see what happens there. And we haven't done too badly this week, despite the fact I've actually been flying, as you would have seen from Saturday's video. Bye now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.